Okay, spam. I could have eaten like three of these. Hi, I'm Beryl. And the theme of this week's episode is... Spam. You don't say ham, you say spam. Spam is real spy ham. <laughs> this is not an ingredient that I was super familiar with, so I had to do a lot of research in making this episode. And if you don't know much about spam, it was made in 1937. It is a spiced pork product, and the history is complicated. I wanna say this before I get into the recipes. A lot of the places that we're going to explore in this episode are in the Pacific, and that is for one big reason. During World War II, U.S. troops were stationed around these islands, and wherever U.S. soldiers went, spam went with it. The history is complicated, as history tends to be, but I still think that this is a food product worth talking about and worth exploring. So, spam may not be for you, but it's definitely for some people, and for those people, it's the Spam episode. <laughs> We're starting with a dish from Hawaii called Spam Masubi. It was created by a Japanese-American woman from Hawaii called Barbara Funumara. In Hawaii in the 1940s, there were a lot of new Japanese immigrants. You may know about America's creation of Japanese internment camps on the mainland, and in Hawaii, things were not much better. The U.S. barred Japanese immigrants from fishing, and this obviously created a lot of problems as fish are a huge part of Japanese cuisine. It's because of this that people got inventive and used Spam, which was on the island because of U.S. soldiers after World War II, as a replacement, like you see here, for fish. This is quite evocative of Japanese sushi, only in place of fish, there is Spam. Today in Hawaii, this is an incredibly popular snack and something that is beloved by a lot of people. Okay, this is Spam Misubi. I'm pretty excited that I made it myself. I actually think I did a pretty good job. This is a great snack idea. Like, totally, totally get that. I've never actually been to Hawaii. I've always wanted to go. Spam is obviously a very salty flavor, but the marinade on this really kind of balances it out because it's got this sweet and salty and it makes it that kind of like perfect snack bite. I could have eaten like three of these. Very easy to prepare. I felt like that was like the perfect amount of Spam and it tasted really delicious. So nine out of 10. Nine because I burnt it a little bit. <laughs> Next up, a Hong Kong breakfast staple, Spam with macaroni. In Cantonese, Spam actually means lunch meat. Following World War II in the 1950s, Hong Kong was playing host to a large number of both British and American expats. And this is when tea houses, also known as cha chan tangs, began springing up all over the country. They catered to this audience by combining typical Chinese ingredients with new Western style ones. Like peanut butter, cheese, Coca-Cola, and of course, Spam. Fusion dishes began popping up like Coca-Cola chicken wings, egg waffles. These were staples at these diners. And of course, the dish which combines a traditional Chinese style soup with Spam, macaroni, and Spam soup. Okay, I have a noodle and Spam soup with a fried egg. It looks really good. Mmm. Ooh. This really reminds me of like a dorm food type of dish. I think I like the Spam fried. It gives it a bit of like a crunchiness and almost like a bacon vibe, or at least like bacon, ad bacon adjacent. I also really like that this recipe leans into buying a pre-made broth instead of having to make one because as much as we love to make homemade fresh broth, that's really not the cards for everybody. This came together in like two seconds. There's something just so nice about an easy meal that doesn't look cheap and easy. Visually, like I think this looks really pretty. Not now, but 
before it did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Spam is good. Again, like the Spam doesn't take over. It's just a slight addition. So it does lend like a saltiness and that bit of kind of like meatiness. That's really nice. I feel like I went into this with an expectation of what Spam was gonna be, and I was wrong. It's better. I'm just gonna do that. This was an interesting soup dish because I think that you kind of needed everything in there for this to be as good as it was. If you had removed one of the elements, it kind of might have fallen a bit flat. Very, very good. I, I liked it. <laughs> This is budejjigae, also known as Korean army stew. Bude can be translated as army base and jjigae means stew in Korean. The dish was created in 1954, soon after the end of the Korean War. During this time, food in the country was scarce and many people were starving. The US military bases were a place where people could find surplus rations to eat or sell. And that's how this dish was invented. Hyogi Suk, now the owner of Odeng Sikdang, a restaurant in Weijungbu, Korea, is heralded as the creator of this dish. She worked as a cook at a US military base and while working there, she would take the leftover meat and sell it at her food stand. Along with every other US base at the time, the meat there included sausages and of course, Spam. So you'll see that this dish combines these Western ingredients with traditional Korean ones like kimchi, gojujang, and mushrooms. Today, this is one of the most popular hot pot dishes in the country, and you can see why. It looks amazing. I have Korean army stew with a bit of rice on the side. Oh my gosh. This smells amazing. Oh my goodness. I love this. Let's get the spam. Let's get the spam. Mmm. The broth was made with just that chicken stock and then mixing the goju jar or goju jang, you know, and then some other things, but it is a red peppery, heat you from the inside, make you feel warm and tingly type of soup flavor, if that makes any sense. Spam. Also that there's melted cheese in here makes it just kind of like, <laughs> of course I'm gonna like this. The Spam in this is not as spammy as I felt the flavor of Spam has been in some of the other dishes. And I think that's probably because it's not the main ingredient. It's one of a melange, as my mother would say. Mm. I think that if you're, if you're wary about going into the Spam game, this might be a good way to start because it's not like you're committed to Spam fully. You're committed to a beautiful soup or a beautiful stew. Yum, also love big mushrooms. Mm. I noticed that a lot of you guys want a mushroom episode. Okay, that sounds great. I love mushrooms. Yum. I feel like I have, like, when a kid eats and they have stuff all over their mouth, that's kind of how I feel I am. Oh my gosh, this was so good. My mouth is on fire a little and my nose is dripping a little, but I'm so happy. <laughs> Next up, from the island of Guam, this is Spam Caliguin. Guam is a small island about 2,100 kilometers or 1,300 miles east of the Philippines. There are around 169,000 people here, but it has been called the Spam capital of the world. This dish, Spam Caliguin, is a side or a main dish and is akin to ceviche. You'll see the lemon juice, coconut, and green onions act as a marinade. Often, this is made with chicken or raw seafood, but it is also now made with Spam. Spam arrived in Guam when American soldiers came to liberate the Chamorro people from a Japanese invading army. They bombed the island for two days, leaving the locals with almost nothing. In a sort of double-edged sword, the canned meat that the Americans brought helped the locals survive. And today, it has become incorporated in the local cuisine. I'm making a type of pan flatbread now called titillas. It is a Chamorais version of the word tortilla. This is a coconut milk sweetened bread that you eat the caliguin with. Ta-da! 
This is the first time I've ever had Chamora cuisine or cuisine from Guam. So I'm kind of, I'm definitely interested. There's a lot of coconut in here. So I guess I put this spam on the bread. Whoa. Wait, this is really good. It's so simple. Oh my God. Hold on. So this is a sweet bread. You can definitely taste the coconut milk in here and the sugar. It was very, very easy to make. I love these kind of pan fry breads. It really makes you feel like you can do anything. You're like, oh yeah, just whipped up some homemade bread. This preparation of the Spam is actually really, really good. There's a ton of acid in this from the lemon and it brightens all that saltiness. Wait, this is, <laughs> this is really good. I am pleasantly surprised. I don't think that the words fresh and spam often go in the same sentence, but this spam dish was fresh and I very much liked it. Yum. <laughs> this is the sandwich de mezcla from Puerto Rico. Mezcla means mixed in Spanish and this party sandwich is most definitely a mixture of many things. The cans arrived in the island in the 1940s, shortly after Spam was created. It was distributed through U.S. government subsidies across the island, and for many Puerto Ricans who didn't have refrigeration units, this shelf-stable meat became a mainstay in the cuisine. The sandwich is a perfect example of how people took what they were given and made something fun out of it. You'll find these sandwiches at parties and cookouts, and they come together quite quickly. This is my final Spam dish. It's a spam witch sandwich <laughs> from Puerto Rico. <laughs> I mean, it tastes exactly like what's in it. And it is rich and cheesy and pimento-y and spammy. Goes down pretty easy. <laughs> Is this the most highbrow sandwich? Absolutely not. But like, is it delicious? Yes. There's something about like a tea sandwich that is supposed to be kind of fancy, but knowing that it's made with queso and spam that you feel a little bit naughty. Is it all the spam? Am I now like really into spam? Even though spam is wholly an American product, it's actually not something that I really had much experience with before filming this video. So this episode actually really opened my eyes to seeing spam as something more than just that can of meat on the bottom shelf in the supermarket. And I'm very thankful for that because I actually have an appreciation for it now. Whereas before it just kind of existed and I didn't really care either way. And I think that's kind of a cool thing with food that you can be around something and never have an interaction with and something can change your mind and it can become something great. So maybe you're not gonna try spam, maybe you will. If you do, let me know. And if you have a recipe that you could recommend, I have a little bit of spam left and it would be cool to try one more dish. Otherwise, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you all in the comments and in my next video.